to the 2020 Master Emission. We are delighted to welcome John Kaplan back for another session. But this time, John, you're going to build on your uh, your first recording where you were speaking about that first call or that first meeting, and you're just going to share a couple of stories. So, John, the, the floor is yours. Hey, so I thought I was thinking about this, and I thought I'd tell you <clears throat> one where my preparation worked in my favor. Uh, my thinking about preparation, execution, and and um, and closing worked in my favor, and then one that didn't work in my favor so well. So let me let me start with the one that 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 worked in our favor, and 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 I remember a large medical device uh, company <clears throat> up in the Northeast. Um, uh, we were called in. Uh, they are the largest and one of the largest in the world. Um, and we were called in uh, for a first meeting. Uh, they were looking for uh, a sales uh, effectiveness transformation project that they were doing. And I believe that we were perfect for them. Uh, we show up and there's a committee of people there, just like the typical, uh, you can only imagine there's like 10 people in the room um, and, uh, you know, Luckily, uh, not luckily, but preparation wise, we knew everybody that was in the room. We had were able to um, understand what was important to the different individuals. So we were prepared with that. We were late, however. So we were not the front runner. Nobody had ever heard of us before. There was somebody that knew somebody that got us introduced. Like somebody was saying like, I can't believe you're not talking to force management. Like you'd be crazy not to talk to force management. And, but they had already kind of gone way down the path for uh, somebody they were going to select for this. So you can imagine it's kind of the, da the deck is uh, stacked against you a little bit. We were able to go in and, you know, begin with like, you know, an outside in approach, even though they, they wanted us, this is a, kind of a good example. They wanted us to come in and say, tell us about force management. Well, we asked them for permission to speak to them about force management based upon some answers to some questions around the impact of the business, what was technically required. Now, we had the requirements, but we asked questions about the requirements. How did you come up with those? And because they were stack rank kind of, or they weren't stack rank, they were kind of not in our favor, so to speak, because they were too generic. By the fact of our questions, they realized that those were too generic. And I talked about that mantra, you know, the positive business outcomes require capabilities and the, and the metrics. And then we talked about, based upon what we heard, then we presented to them force management. Let me tell you how we do those. Let me tell you how we do it differently or better and where we've done it before. In that meeting, the economic buyer actually stopped us in like before we were closing. And uh, when we closed for new re revised required capabilities, because we wanted them to be more specific, which would be valuable for them and absolutely valuable for us. The economic buyer stopped us in the middle and said, hey, one question. I said, sure, go ahead. They said, are you going to teach our people how to sell like this? And I said, absolutely. And it was it. I mean, it was it. We, um, we, uh, it, they asked, they, they invited us back to a uh, company-wide meeting, not just with sellers. They had us come back and speak to a company-wide meeting. And I talked to you about this mantra. Well, we use it in everything that we do. So every meeting we had with them afterwards, we said, hey, let's begin with what we heard. And after the third or fourth meeting, they actually said to us, hey, are you going to show us that slide again with the required capabilities, the po or excuse me, the positive business outcomes, the required capabilities and metrics? And we said, yes, we are. And they said, you don't have to. They're still the same. And he joked about it at that time, like he was a little irritated. But a year later, what he told the whole company was, these people were so buttoned up with us that every time they demonstrated to us, they opened up a meeting and closed the meeting with, here's what we heard you say. Is it still valid, still relevant? 
and I'm friends with that person today. That person has since retired and I'm friends with that person today. And we still talk about that where it's not just how you sell, excuse me. It's not just what you sell. Many times it can be how you sell. So that's where it worked in my favor. Can you imagine John Kaplan selling to you? I just, I just don't think it's fair. It's <laughs> like, just, hey, <laughs> I've got a different one for you. Can you imagine being John Kaplan and having being on these podcasts and then having to sell? And people go, you, you're not selling to me like you talk about on those podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be consistent now, John. You're right. The, the pressure's <laughs> on, buddy. So tell yeah. us the story, John, about the one where it didn't go wrong. Holy where it smokes. Didn't go well. I'll never forget this one. It's years and years ago. Not that I don't make mistakes, but this one was years and years ago in Grand Rapids, Michigan, when I was working for Xerox. And I was, um, you could call it selling to a large office equipment manufacturer. There's three or four. There's three there, so I won't. I won't uh, alienate anybody. It was mostly alienating myself. But I was calling on, it was a huge competitive install. And Kodak at the time was a big competitor. And they had these big print shops inside the uh, inside this <clears throat> inside this customer, two or three pr- big print production facilities. Um, and I couldn't get anywhere with these people. So what did I do as a young seller? I went over their heads and I went to the COO of this large uh, manufacturing company. Remember I said in the, in the original podcast with you, I said, it's not whether or not you can get a meeting, it's whether or not you'll be welcome back. So I got the meeting with the COO. And because I didn't do purpose, process, or payoff, because I didn't talk about what the purpose of the meeting was, what process we were going to use, or what the benefit to that individual was, Bad things happen to me on this call. So I get the meeting. I'm all excited. I show up. It's in the boardroom. And can you imagine what a boardroom looks like of the premier office uh, office furniture in the world? I mean, it's a legit intimidating uh, boardroom. So I'm in there, and I walk in, immediately walk in, and guess who's in there? The two people that I tried to go over their head. They're sitting there and they got a big crap eating smile on like the Cheshire cat. They just look at my (laughs) face when I walk in and my eyes go like this and they're looking at me. They didn't have to say it, but they're looking at me like, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? So then the CEO and I'm panicking, I'm sweating a little bit and the COO walks in. And the COO sits down. Well, why were those two people there? Because the COO looked down at their calendar. There was no agenda. They had no idea of why I was there. They probably picked up the phone and called the print shop people and said, I got a guy from Xerox coming. You, you guys should probably come to this meeting. I don't know what the meeting's about. And I think everybody around the world can translate this experience because it's happened to you because you didn't follow these principles that we're talking about. Well, Okay, I got to redeem myself. I'm sitting there and the two birds, the two enemies are staring at me, staring holes right through me like, let's see how this dude gets out of this. And so I think about, I'm like, I prepared a great discovery question and I'm going to wow this COO with this discovery question. And I said something like this, Mr. and Mrs. COO, could you please tell me the importance of the documentation inside your company that if weren't done on time or with the proper information would bring your organization to its knees. Like I, I, I like that was my best question. Right. And I threw it out there and it was, I thought it was such a great question. And I looked over at the two birds and the two birds were looking at the COO. Like that's a pretty good question. And you know what happened guys? I embarrassed the COO. Yeah, it was a good question, but he wasn't expecting that kind of question from me. So at first, the look on his face was a little bit of being stunned. And I was kind of like, oh, crap, I don't think this is going to go well. And I kind of like tried to take the question back. And he leaned forward, Ali and Simon, he leaned forward and looked at me and he goes, hey, basically like, hey, smart guy, you want to tell me what the heck that question has to do with selling copiers? I thought you were here to talk about copiers. And I knew that I had, I had, um, I had alienated this person because they weren't ready to answer. They, if, if I had given them that question and they came prepared, they would have crushed that question, but they weren't ready for the question. It embarrassed them that they weren't ready. They reacted to it negatively. And they actually said to me, excuse me, I have another meeting. 
and they got up and left. And this is a true story. The CO gets up and left, leaves. There's nobody. And I look, and the two birds are looking at me, their arms folded, and they're looking at me with big, big smiles on their face. You know what I did? I didn't say a word. I closed my notebook, and I got up and left. I never even said anything to the two enemies because I knew that they were just going to crush me. And I never, ever forgot it. I never wanted to surprise an executive with a question that if I had given them, I want the answer to that question, but if I've given them the time to prepare for it, he would have nailed that. And purpose, process, payoff. If I didn't want those people in the room, I would have told that executive why I wanted his perspective and not theirs. But since he didn't know, he assumed, and that's the old thing, you get delegated to those that you sound like. You get delegated to those that you sound like. So when I reached out to him, I probably sounded like a copier salesperson. And so he had copier people in the room. Great, great learning experience for me. Wow. Love to have been a fly on the wall on that one. (laughs) Yeah, just to see me sweat. (laughs) I had a lot more hair back then, so I was sweating out my head a lot. (laughs) I bet it surely went after that, right? (laughs) Yeah, amen, amen. Wow, what a great, 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 great story. So, uh, John, obviously, um, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you back on the show. And, uh, you know, in the first session, you gave us all the amazing concepts and the, 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 the theory based on so much experience. But um, to hear it in the, in the story form, I think we just really kind of <laughs> amazing to hear it all kind of baked in. So thank you so much for, for being with us and, and, and uh, joining us and sharing your your knowledge your wisdom and uh your enthusiasm and uh thank you so much it's been an absolute absolute privilege and, and a pleasure my pleasure guys keep doing what you're doing it's uh it's having big impact out there and i'm really really honored and happy to be a part of it happy new year crush it this year uh, hey fantastic Thanks ever so much, John. So again, to all our viewers and listeners, we hope you've enjoyed this session. If you like what you've heard, please do share and subscribe. But again, a big thank you to John Kaplan for joining us today. And we look forward to welcoming you all back for another Mastery Session soon. Thanks, everyone.